Hello everybody and welcome to my first, well, my only video on this, the very, very pink double film show, which looks also shockingly like the Ilford Sprite Spirit, I forget what they're calling that one, almost as though it's exactly the same camera but with a different manufacturer's name on it. But anyway, this is the double film. And uh, I'm going to do my best to keep the glare out of the screen for you, because if I move this Sharpie here, wait, now it's not glaring. Okay, never mind. Get rid of the Sharpie. So, Double Film Show is a 35mm point-and-shoot film camera. It has no light meter. A guillotine shutter, which is kind of like a leaf shutter, but really kind of its own thing as well. Shutter speeds of approximately 1 100th of a second. Now I say approximately because as I understand it, this is mechanically the same inside as the Ilford and the, the former Kodak cam camera. And those list different shutter speeds. I think some of them, I forget which, list 1 125th. I think the double film lists 1 100th. So uh, with the shutters, the way that this is designed, which is basically a glorified modern day box shutter shutter, it's, it's, it's in that ballpark of a hundredth, and that's good enough. The flash sync on this speed is this, the shutter speed. It syncs at the one shutter speed. And the flash on this is built into the camera. It doesn't have like a PC port or anything. The target market for this camera is toy or fun users. And um, double film, I know that this is a, an offshoot of a photo app, I don't, I don't use the app. I don't really know that much about what they do um, other than release very experimental grade films and this camera. It is effectively completely plastic. There, there are minimal metal components in it. We know there is some metal because it has a flash and a battery and you need that metal to conduct the electricity. But even the lens in this is plastic. It appears to be one of many identical cameras, and from a functional and internal construction perspective, going back to at least the 1980s, which was the oldest version of this camera that I could find, and, and I, I, I think I got rid of that one because, oh yeah, I did, because I took it apart to try and pull the lens out of to adapt it to, to Sony. <laughs> Because <laughs> you see a camera like this, and it's just like, I want to put that on fr on the front of a mirrorless Sony camera. That's going to be awesome. Why do I do these things? Anyway, so I found a blue uh, reusable camera absolutely from the 1980s. And it had the exact same film door on it with the exact same curvature. And when I opened that camera up, please don't have film or good, it doesn't. It had the exact same curved film plane, the exact same internal structures, literally the exact same molding uh, appeared to have been used to the point that that, that camera I got for like a dollar because the hinge, this clip was broken. I could have pulled this door off of this camera and put it on that one and gone to town using it. Anyway, all of that uh, aside about that camera that I tried to convert to, <laughs> to Sony, uh, I will say, it also comes with a very, very long lanyard. This is perfect for hanging it around your neck or, or using it as a shoulder strap, and that means that this camera is meant to be carried frequently. It's, it's one that is clearly meant to be used. Uh, and lastly, this camera is unarguably cute, and I am struggling to think of a professional or advanced amateur level camera that I would describe as unarguably cute. So for production, I could not find out who makes these. Now, my, my theory is that the same company is making these for Kodak, Ilford, Double Film, and, and I feel like I just recently saw another company um, that was releasing one of these, other, and possibly Lomography as well as somebody else. I, I could have sworn I saw another brand of these. Um, I could not find out who was making these. And believe me when I tell you, I really did try. The Kodak M35 website, which has got a different front shell on it, 
refers to a company called Sino, S-I-N-O, Promise. And the website for that is linked in the description. It's www.sinopromise.com. At point, and it, it is, and the, the Kodak website refers to that at points. Now, um, if this, the, the Harman Sprite and the others are in fact the same camera, which seems probable, then Sino Promise is, if not the manufacturer, the marketing company that is doing the business to business sales for these so that companies are putting the brand of the other 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 companies on their product so as with everything modern photo as everything photographic chinese it is hard to trace exactly what's going on and uh, if you don't believe me then try to find out more about all of the different brands of like seven artisans and tt artisans and all of those different mirrorless lens brands you can buy on ebay some of them don't even have brand names on them, and uh, and and look at how they're related to per gear. At any rate, we're getting way off topic. I need to not do that. I'm assuming that this was made in China, and insofar as I can tell, it was made in 2020 and is current. This is 2021, and so production appears to still be ongoing, as there are um, other other brands that have this same body style. So speculation and theorizing aside, if you have your double film show, we're going to go over everything on it and talk about what everything is. And then after that, we're going to talk about how to use it so that you can take photos with it. Here's the top of the camera. This is your film rewind knob and lever. Oh, actually, does it just flip out, I think? I don't think this post lifts. Maybe it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. This is your film rewind lever right there okay this is your uh, flash ready light this is your frame count window for when you're taking your photos shutter release button on the front of the camera we have the viewfinder window right here this is a viewfinder point and shoot camera we have the flash right here we have the flash on off switch and if you you might be able to see there that the red light is now on. The capacitors on these are, are uh, definitely strong. And so um, one other thing to notice is if you look in the lens, I'm not 100% certain you can see that, but if I turn the flash off, there's an app, the aperture gets bigger. As I turn the flash on, there's an aperture plate that slides into place and it's smaller. So flash off, it's an F8 lens flash on it's an f11 lens that also means that if you are outside shooting in the sun let's say or if you don't have a battery in this you have a little bit of aperture control because you can switch between the two apertures then of course oh, let me discharge the capacitor or not okay then of course we have the lens double film 32 millimeter f8 show so make and model on the camera's bottom we have the film rewind button release button right here which we you'll use to re rewind the button i'll show you that in a little bit here we have the battery chamber and as you can see it uses a single AAA battery on the camera's back we have the viewfinder window film advance and then oh on the side here we have the film back release button. There we go. All right, inside of the camera, we have the film cassette area. This is where the film is going to go when we load it to take photos. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. This right here is the sprocket interface. And what happens is that as you advance the film, the action of advancing the film doesn't actually do anything for the shutter. This sprocket interface here turns the gears and that's what arms the shutter. Here we have the shutter box with some perfunctory guide rails in there to keep the film kind of in place and the film take up spool. So um, now if, if see no promise or double film or Ilford or Kodak or Lomography or any of you guys are listening to this right now and are 
sitting around thinking, gee, I wonder what David Hancock thinks would be some awesome improvements for this camera if we decide to make a second version of it. Perfect timing, that's what we're gonna talk about. So there are two things. The first one is a double exposure switch on the back. Now, some of the lowmography higher end cameras have a little switch here or here. Do not have a La Sardina within grasp to show you but that switch rearms the shutter so you can do double exposures and that would be something that would be really neat to do and it would be a lot easier than doing a double exposure by rewinding the film, which I'll show you how to do at the end of this video. And then the second thing that I think would really improve the versatility of this camera would be a switch to convert it from single instant shutter speeds to a time, preferably, or a bulb mode. Having a, a mode where you can flip a switch and then push this down to open the shutter and push it to close it would really make this really good for double exposure, or uh, long exposures rather, or, or um, even that would be suitable, uh, or ideal rather, for something like rear curtain sync flash if that's not too complex. But realistically, the two things I would love to see in a version two are a double exposure switch and a time mode on the shutter. So the first thing that we're going to do here, even though you don't need a battery to operate this camera, is we're going to change the battery. And all you have to do to get into the battery is lift up this door right here, and now we can access it. And we just pull the dead battery out. We just go into the tool bin, we grab a screwdriver, we hopefully don't discharge the capacitor into ourselves, we pull the, disc, the, the dead battery out, there we go. Now to reload the battery, it's significantly easier. Just grab your fresh battery, drop it into place, and then close the battery chamber. And that is how we reload the battery. Next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to put film in the camera, and then also uh, use how the film moves through the camera and how to rewind it. So to load the film, we're going to first open up the camera back just like that. We're going to grab our roll of film and we're going to pop this post up so that we can drop the film in. There we go. Now we're going to lower that in place, pull out a bit of a leader, and we're going to start looking for a way to attach this. Now, many take-up spools have a slot, slot that you put it in. This one does not. It has these little grips down here on the bottom. So we're just going to, going to line up the sprocket holes with those grips. Just gonna line up the sprocket holes with, oh, come on. Just gonna line up the sprocket holes with the grips. There we go. Just shove the leader down there a bit and it'll start taking. It, nope, that is not good. If you see right there how the, uh, you can see the emulsion coming through the sprocket holes, you can see it through there. I'm gonna show you what's going on here that is a problem. This is not the first roll of film I've had this happen with in this type of reusable camera. The uh, film was being fed this way. It was not wrapping around the take-up spool. So we're going to try this again. We're going to try bending this over on itself a bit more. That should help. Okay. This might work. That's better. There we go. Okay, you can see it, it did try to push itself up here, which could have been a mess, but I just kind of pushed it back down. And now it's taking up properly on the film take-up spool. Now we're going to close this guy. And right there, if, you're lo if you might be able to see that says S, And now it says one. Now, one thing I want you to notice here, I'll make it easy for you to see, is after we load it, we're gonna, we're gonna tighten up any slack by, dot, by rotating this the direction of the arrow. You don't wanna crank it. You, don't, you, you will break this film rewind knob before you damage the film. So you just wanna take up any slack. And then we're gonna take a picture here. And as you advance it, you can see how this is spinning. You know that your film is being taken up properly two ways with this camera. If this is spinning, 
and if the shutter arms. The shutter will only arm if the film is moving across that sprocket. So if you didn't load your film correctly and it's not moving across that sprocket, the shutter will not arm. Okay, so what happens with film is you're gonna be going along taking photos throughout the course of your day, just like this really simple basic type of use. And film is one and done. So in real life, of course, you don't want to open the film back, but this film is already shot and I wanna show you what happens in here as the camera takes a photo. When you take a picture, you advance the film and the film here, which has been unused, is pulled out across the back of the camera and taken up on the film take-up spool, just like that. And that's super simple. When you rewind the film, you will push the film rewind button on the bottom there, and then we will start to rewind the film. This is a lot easier with the film back closed, but there we go. And that's how you rewind the film. And again, of course, you do not open the film back when you're doing this. Then in real life, you would rewind the film all the way into the camera, but I need to use this for other videos. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a leader. Once the film is rewound entirely into the camera, then it is safe to open up your, your, uh, your film door. When I say film is one and done, what I mean is the emulsion that you're looking at right now can record light exactly one time in a controlled manner by getting a proper aperture and shutter speed or generally in the vicinity with this camera or in an uncontrolled manner by just pulling it out of the film cassette, for instance, or having it spanning the back of your camera and then opening your film door. That's a really good way to expose film in an uncontrolled manner as well. Thing That's something you don't want to do. Okay, but that's how you do it. And then when you're done, uh, unloading your film, you just grab a new roll, drop it in, and feed it into the camera if you're going to keep taking photos that day. Better. Not perfect, but better. Okay, we're going to leave that in there because I'm going to need that in just a few minutes anyway. So for flash use on this camera, you're fairly limited. You have one option for flash use, which is to turn on the on-camera flash. Oh, that's bright. And use that. No off-camera flash with this. So realistically, you're, if you use the flash on this, you're gonna get slightly waxy looking subjects, but that is part of the aesthetic of this type of camera. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to take a picture with this camera. And it is exceedingly simple. You've seen me do it dozens of times in this video already. You wanna make sure that you've advanced the film until the dial doesn't spin anymore. And then you're gonna look through the viewfinder, frame up your image how you want it to be framed. Really? Ha <laughs> ha, I should actually put pressure on the dial when I try to demonstrate it. So we were at the framing up your viewfinder step, and then you push the shutter button and you've taken a picture, either with or without the flash. And then you just advance your film. All right, so what about double exposures? Now the camera is not designed to have double exposures because uh, it doesn't have a double exposure switch. So what I'm gonna show you is a workaround for that, or as they call it, a hack. It's actually a workaround. And um, what I'm gonna do is show you that workaround so you can take double exposures. You will probably not get your framing exactly perfect if you do it this way. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your photo and now you have to rearm the shutter. In order to rearm the shutter, the film actually has to physically move through the camera, okay? So you cannot just hold down the film rewind button and hold this and advance the film because you won't rearm the shutter. So what you wanna do is get an idea of where this, this film rewind knob is, and it'll be easier to do if you flip the arm out a little bit and take out the, the tension. Now we're going to advance the film. There we go. And we know that this turned slightly more than, slightly less than three quarters of a turn. I'm gonna hold the film rewind button. That's pretty darn close. Take our double exposure. Uh, it 
sounds like the uh, film has popped off of the track in there. Yeah, the uh, film did not like how it was loaded. Something has happened. Excuse me for a moment while I get to the bottom of why my camera has suddenly stopped working. That would be why. No, it wouldn't. What's going on? Okay, so what happened is the shape of this thing, it wasn't fully gripping into the teeth. And when I did the double exposure, I don't think it was related to that. It just popped off the teeth. So what we're going to do is we're going to try this again. Okay. Now that we've got that worked out, let's try to figure out how to do a double exposure. All right, so we're going to take all the slack out of the film again. There we go. We're going to take our first shot. We're going to note that this is at about, we're going to call that 8 o'clock, okay, from my, from my perspective. Advance the film. It goes to midnight. Hold down the film rewind button. Take it on back to 8. Take our second shot, re-advance, and as you can see, it's now again at midnight, which means we have advanced at the proper amount after that double exposure, so the next frame will not overlap with the double exposure. So that's also a good thing to know when you're going to do that. And I'm also going to guess that if you wanted to, you could listen to the number of clicks So you might have been able to hear as I was rewinding that, that the, the gears were clicking in here. And as the film was being rewound, it was pulling backwards on this gear and making that clicking noise. So uh, I don't recall off the top of my head the number of sprockets that are in a frame of 35 millimeter film, the number of sprocket holes that you would need to click. Uh, right. Some things not, you know what, don't worry about it, man. Treat this camera. Like, this was an expensive camera because of the brand, but the, the Harmons and the Kodaks are significantly more expensive if you have one of those. Have fun with it, man. Just, uh, just you know, all the standard stuff applies, right? Like, it's don't leave it in your car, don't let it get wet. But at the same time, like, it's meant to have fun. And if it gets damaged or destroyed while you're using it because it is it is not meant to be an heirloom to put it mildly uh hey if it gets you some good photos and you have some fun with it and it gives you some memories that you can ha hold on to with your friends that's exactly what this camera is supposed to do so i would say the only thing you shouldn't do with this camera is let it sit on your shelf unused with that have a fun day everybody and i will see you in the next camera manual video Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.